Hey, what's going on guys? This is Broku, and welcome back to another Dragon Ball video. And welcome back to What If Beerus Woke Up After GT, the fan fiction. This is part 5, if you have not seen the other parts yet, the links to all the previous parts will be in the description below, so go and check those out. And here's a quick route to that, a card to part 1 on the top right of the screen to get you started. But anyways guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you do enjoy, and join my Discord that will be linked down below in the description. And do that if you want to be a part of my community. Here is a summary of all the previous parts, but if you don't need a summary at all, and remember all the parts, here is a timestamp so you can just skip ahead. In the last part, Bardock was wished back to life from Goku's wish during the Tournament of Power, and this caused him to go around finding old friends before trying to find Goku. He would eventually fight Goten and Trunks in a quick sparring match, and would also face off against Vegeta, who would tell him where Goku is. And then Bardock would meet Goku, and they faced off as well, and Goku was very happy that his father was this strong. But we then finished off with Perfect Cell arriving, and killing Dende and Popo before he walked into the Hyperbolic Time Chamber. Dun dun dun. Now, how Cell arrived will be explained eventually, but let's get into this, guys. Goten and Trunks had just got done eating breakfast with each other. Of course, they are saying, so they eat a lot of food, and that's what they did. But then they fly up to the lookout to spend some time training in the time chamber. Not a whole day, but they spend a few minutes in there, which would equal a few days of actual training on the inside. And they walk into the time chamber, and they begin to train. They feel a like weird presence inside of it, though. But they don't know what it is, so they just train like nothing's going on. After several hours of training inside the chamber, so not a lot of time passing outside, Goten realizes they forgot to bring in their bags, so he goes out to get them. Be back in a few minutes, Trunks, just gonna grab the bags real quick. Goten goes to grab his bags when he notices a blood trail. He is confused and follows the trail, and he sees a dead Popo and a dead Dende. He immediately drops the bags back off and rushes back into the room of spirit and time. Trunks, Dende and Popo are dead. Somebody killed them. We need to tell everybody. Trunks looked over at Goten. He was shocked and immediately stopped his training as well. Now, now, hold on. Don't go telling everyone, Cell says as he lands between the two of them. I can't let you guys tell anyone that I am back or that people are dead. I'm not nearly strong enough to take on your fathers yet, but I am strong enough to kill you guys. Who are you and how long have you been in here? I am Cell. Has your fathers never told you about me? Hmm, what a shame. I've been training here for a month. And this is what they used to defeat me back in the day, many years ago. And I will use it against them, and I'll defeat them and kill them all. Goten and Trunks then power up to Super Saiyan Blue and begin to fight Perfect Cell. And they are both taking him on at the same time, and Trunks and Goten know how to fight together. When they do fight together, it is hard for the opponent to fight back. Cell is actually overpowered by the two, but it's a good fight overall, he still keeps up with them. He's stronger than both of them individually, but not when they fight together. This is when Perfect Cell actually powers up, and shows his full power, and it's a huge advantage over them. A month of Cell training in the Time Chamber has done him wonders in terms of power. We can't take him separately, Goten. We need to become one, Trunks says, and Goten and Trunks then do the fusion dance and become Gotenks, and then they go Super Saiyan Blue. What? Fusion? They're so strong. Far stronger than me. But if fusion makes two strong beings even stronger, then it must work the same for two dumb people fusing as well. Such fools. Cell uses instant transmission and lands right behind Gotenks before he even notices and plunges his tail into the back of Gotenks and begins to steal his power. Gotenks is getting smaller and losing muscles, and then he reverts to his base form and diffuses. The lifeless bodies of Goten and Trunks lay on the floor of the chamber with all the power sucked out of them. They are small and shriveled bodies. Cell looks down at himself and is amazed with this newfound power. He then begins to train even more. Two hours pass outside and Gohan is mad. Goten and Trunks were supposed to be done with training an hour ago. What on earth could they be doing? I better go check on them. Mom is going to be pissed. And then Gohan flies towards the lookout. That's weird, they left their bags out. They usually always take them in. Dende, Popo, do you guys know why Goten and Trunks are taking so long? And Gohan then sees the dead mangled bodies of Mr. Popo and Dende. What? Who did this? Who could do this? Was this Goten? Or Trunks? What the? Gohan then runs into the chamber, knowing that something is off. He walks in, and memories of training with his father preparing for Cell flood his brain. He then sees Cell training in the chamber, 
At first, Gohan thought it was a figment of his imagination, the memories of Cell becoming to life. But then, Cell stopped training and said, Well, hello, Gohan. I think we have a score to settle. And Gohan looked over the two dead bodies. They looked old and shriveled. This is when Gohan realized this was not a figment of his imagination anymore. Goten, Trunks, Cell, what did you do to them? Well, the boys were going to tell everyone about my return, and I couldn't just let that happen. Also, they were quite strong, so taking their powers, that was just a bonus for me. How could you, Cell? You were dead. How are you back? Well, actually, Gohan, it looks like some men devoted to Dr. Jiro had stumbled through his work and found me. After doing further research and finding out that I had been killed, they decided it was their duty to bring me back to life with the Dragon Balls. Such devoted men, such a shame I had to kill them. As Cell began to laugh, but you, Gohan, how disappointed I am. You should be the strongest of all of your friends, but you grew lazy and irresponsible. Your Earth is now in trouble because you failed to train properly. I have been watching you. How pathetic that your little brother can attain the blue form, and yet you cannot. Gohan is so mad. His dead brother and friends start to piss him off so much, and he goes Super Saiyan 2, and he begins to fight Cell. Super Saiyan 2 Gohan is actually stronger than Blue Goten or Trunks, but weaker than Gotenks. He doesn't have the full God Key where he can go blue, but he is so strong because he did train with God Tier characters for a while. That same form you killed me with. How pathetic it is now. Imagine if I had actually trained back then against you guys. You would have had no chance. Gohan is just getting thrown around by Cell, who had become insanely strong from his training, and absorption of Gotenks' powers. Gohan, I'm disappointed. I wanted to kill you, yes, but I wanted it to be fun. This will be quite boring, but oh well. You will see your brother soon. And just as Cell says that, Gohan explodes with rage and attains the Super Saiyan Rage form, the bridge between Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan Blue. At least, I think that's what it is. What is this power? As we know, the Super Saiyan Rage form is extremely strong, so Gohan is not going to be toe-to-toe -to -toe with Cell. Cell, you made the same mistake again. You didn't finish it when you could have. Even though you may be this perfect android, you will always have your downfalls. Cell, despite being mad, still has confidence in, in himself and doesn't seem to be in desperation, despite Super Saiyan Rage and Gohan pummeling him. Perfect Cell stops and begins to laugh. Why are you laughing, Cell? Is it because your own demise is coming yet again? No, it's just you should know that I am a smart person. And if Saiyans can transform and I have Saiyan genes, I should be able to transform too. So I look into this. Well, it turns out I couldn't go Super Saiyan like you. But somebody else that I have the, the DNA of can transform. And then Cell goes golden. Frieza's race seems to have further forms of power. What do you think, Gohan? Gohan is shocked with this power. Remember, Golden Cell never happened in this timeline. Golden Cell just starts throwing Super Saiyan Rage Gohan around like he is nothing, and Gohan can't even touch him. And Cell is doing this without using any effort whatsoever. I need to tell the others. Gohan screams as he rushes towards the exit. But before he can reach it, Cell grabs him from behind and is holding him by his head. You will not tell everybody else. I will do that myself and Cell shoots out dozens of Cell Juniors from his tail. My children, go out and wreak havoc. Kill anyone in sight, but most importantly, have fun doing it. The Cell Juniors leave the room, and Gohan is in agony watching them leave. He knows the damage that they can do. Eventually your father and your other friends will find me in here, and you I guess too, but by then it will likely be too late as I would have had way too much time to train. For now, you are my prisoner and you will wish you were dead. Cell had two Cell Juniors hold Gohan down, grabbing both of his arms, and Cell would punch him in the gut or in his face repeatedly, torturing Gohan. At one point, Cell even absorbed the powers of Gohan's legs, making them shrivel and become tiny. He couldn't walk anymore. With several hours passing on the outside, Vegeta had finally defeated the many Cell Juniors that killed millions of innocent people, and Majub helped as well, along with Tien, Krillin, 18 and many others. Goku and Bardock got word of this and they all rushed back to Earth and saw the chaos of what happened. Juniors, huh? How? Any sight of Cell? No Kakarot. Nowhere. Can't even sense his key or anything. Well, maybe Dende can see him somewhere on here. Let's go ask him. Goku, Bardock, Vegeta, and Majub arrive on the lookout and can't seem to find Dende. Where could he be? Then, they all saw it. The dead body. The mangled remains. Cell was here. Then they looked over at the Room of Spirit and Time and saw a trail of blood lead to the room, with Goten and Trunks' bags sitting right outside of it. Goku and Vegeta were worried and pissed, because their sons must be in danger. So anyways guys, that's the end of this part. Hope you guys enjoyed. Next part, we will get to see the awesome match of Goku, 
Bardock, Vegeta, and maybe Majub fighting against Perfect Cell, who can go golden, and maybe he has other powers that we have not seen yet. But anyways, please do leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new, and turn on notifications if you want to see more of my videos. Also, join my Discord, that's linked down below, and so is my Twitter. So feel free to follow me on Twitter, guys. That would be much appreciated. And thanks to all my Patreon supporters, Diraj Payton, the awesome guy who only sports Broku on Patreon, and Zaktotaku. Those are my Super Saiyan 1s, but thanks to my Super Saiyan 2s as well. Israel Flores, Mystic Ghoul, Darius, Badass Thug, Griffin, Jacob, Dutch Gamer Monkey, Sin Overlord, and Connor Trigg. Thank you guys so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot, and I hope you guys all have an amazing day. Peace out.